the year 288 AC, as new members of the King Eris' court became entrenched, the likes of Wisdom Rosart, of the Archmaster's Guild, and Varys the Spider, whom both had been given honorary titles as lords and seats on the small council, even to the common folk of King's Landing, King Eris' ever-growing madness had become unmistakable and undeniable, from the sands of dawn to the cold of the wall, referring to King Eris as simply the Mad King, became commonplace. The new nickname was not just reserved to the small folk, but even lords both petty and high, with it even reaching across the narrow sea to the free cities. No matter the events to come, Eris's legacy had now been cemented. He would forever be known as the Mad King. There were other nicknames as well that, while stuck, did not reach the popularity of the Mad King. The people of King's Landing began to call Eris King Scab for the countless times that he had cut himself upon the Iron Throne. Many already had decided that omen meant the like Rhaenyra Targaryen and Maegor the Cruel before him. The Iron Throne had now rejected Eris as the influence of Lord Varys the Spider and his network of informants grew. Always listening, always whispering, it became very dangerous to voice any of these sentiments, or thus share the same fate as Sir Ilan Payne, who had lost his tongue for a perceived insult to Eris. If things had become tense in King's Landing, with the King's madness, it was ten times worse inside the walls of the Red Keep itself. At the court of the Mad King, there was a thick, underlying atmosphere of tension, as lords and courtiers, whom before had been fast friends, began to mistrust one another, fearing the other could be one of the spider's informants. Even within the royal family itself, decade-old personal issues festered, as King Eris became ever more estranged from his own son and heir, Prince Rhaegar, with no semblance of respect or trust left. The truth is, despite Eris's dislike for his own son, Prince Rhaegar for the most part is all you could have wanted in an heir apparent. It is said that he had deep purple eyes, long elegant fingers, and was taller than his younger brother Viserys would be in his adulthood. Rhaegar's hair had the traditional silver blonde of House Targaryen. The prince was well loved by the people of the Seven Kingdoms during his lifetime and still fondly remembered to this day. He was an intelligent young man who excelled at anything he wished to put his mind to and grew to be a great knight and skilled musician. The latter, however, he held preference to. Men said Rhaegar loved his silver-stringed harp more than he loved his lance. It has also been noted by men such as Jorah Mormont, the former lord of Bear Island, that Rhaegar was valiant, honourable, and noble, while Barristan Selmy, the Kingsguard, has been known to call him determined, deliberate, dutiful, and single-minded. The crown prince was said to have been uninterested in the play of other children as a boy, and bookish to a fault. He learned to read at such an early age that people jested that his mother, Rayella, had swallowed books and candles during her pregnancy. It was clear from his valiant performance at the great tourney at Lannisport in 276 AC that the small folk had great love for the crown prince, something that would only stoke Ares' paranoia further. Rhaegar was also described as a melancholy young man and often spent time in the burned ruins of Summerhall, the place of his birth, spending hours sitting alone in the ruin with only his harp. After each visit, he would return with a new song of such beauty it could reduce women to tears, or so several testimonies state. There are some who have suggested that Rhaegar had shown little interest in women in his youth, but like with these matters, we could not say for sure, and only speculate. But early in the year 279 AC, after the failure and tragedy of Stephen Baratheon's hunt in Essos for a bride for the prince, and another extensive long search in the months after, a bride was finally found for the 20-year-old Prince Rhaegar, whom was formerly betrothed to Elia Martel, herself 22 years of age. While Elia met nearly none of Eris's long list of specifications for a bride he had given Stephen Baratheon, he did consent to the match. Some have suggested that Eris briefly came to his senses and realised no perfect bride could be found, or some attribute this softening of approach to the likes of Lord Varys, or maybe perhaps even Tywin Lannister. Elia was the younger sister of the Prince of Dawn, Doran Martell. Very few of the lords at court knew much of Elia, but it is said that she was beautiful, slender, with dark eyes and a flat chest. From what was known of her at the time, she had frequent issues with her health, having been born one moon too early. Thus, she did not travel much in her youth to the other kingdoms of Westeros, which is why she is such an unknown quantity for many at court. Barristan Salmi of the Kingsguard is known to have said of Elia that she was gentle, 
good and gracious, but very frail. He also said that she was kind and clever, with a good wit. While not obvious choice to be Rhaegar's one day future queen, other than her health, Beau could complain about the match, especially if it would once again bring the crown and dawn closer together. They were wed the following year, early in 280 AC, in a lavish ceremony at the great sept of Baelor in King's Landing, as the small folk lined the streets to catch a glimpse of their future king and queen. It was said to be a jubilant day, given the love the small folk held for Prince Rhaegar. King Eris did not attend the wedding, which in truth surprised no one at court, even Prince Rhaegar himself. Most would take such a move as a slight, but the common line of thought is that if Eris had attended, it would have cast a gloomy shadow over the occasion. It is said that Eris told his small council that he feared someone might use the opportunity to make an attempt on his life even if he had all seven of his Kingsguard about his person to protect him. He also forbade his second son Viserys from attending the wedding. It is believed at this early stage, King Aerys had already begun to consider disinheriting Rhaegar and naming Viserys his heir, seeing the then four-year-old boy as much less of a threat to his rule than his beloved first son. We cannot know if this is true, but given the events over the next few years, it would certainly fit with Aerys' known fixations of this time. Prince Rhaegar and his new wife Elia chose to take up residence on Dragonstone rather than stay at court in the Red Keep under the eyes of his suspicious father. But this in itself caused rumours to fly fast up and down the Seven Kingdoms. There were some who claimed that Prince Rhaegar, seeing the danger to the realm of his father's madness, planned to depose him and seize the Iron Throne himself. Some took this even further by claiming Rhaegar was secretly planning an open rebellion should his father refuse to step aside, with Tywin Lannister supporting, backing and funding the prince. On the other side, rumours were also growing that the Mad King was too planning his own action against Prince Rhaegar by disinheriting him and naming the four-year-old Viserys as heir and Prince of Dragonstone in his place. Nor did the birth of Aerys' first grandchild soften his resolve in any way. In 280 AC on Dragonstone, Elia Martell gave birth to a healthy baby girl they named Rhaenys. When Prince Rhaegar returned to King's Landing to present the babe at court to his own mother and father, Aerys publicly refused to touch or hold Rhaenys and in fact complained that she smelt Dornish. In truth, it is true that Princess Rhaenys did take after her mother and her Dornish look of House Martell with a darker skin complexion and lacking the traditional silver hair of a Targaryen. While in days gone by, in the time before the Dance of the Dragons, unvalyrian looking Targaryens were a rare thing given how common incestuous marriages within the family were. But for the last century, there have been countless of the blood of the dragon, born lacking traditional Valyrian qualities. But it did not make them, including Princess Rhaenys, any less Targaryen. From what little we know of Princess Rhaenys, it is said that she was a happy child who loved the many cats of the Red Keep, brought in to replace the rat catchers by Otto Hightower after the infamous blood and cheese incident during the Dance of the Dragons. She had a kitten of her own that she took everywhere with her. Rhaenys liked to pretend her kitten, she named Balerion, was actually the dragon, Balerion the Black Dread.